We thank you for the service that you've given us, O oh God. We thank you, Father God, for this time of fellowship that you've given us tonight, O oh God. We pray, Father God, may you give us some things, Father God, that can edify us, O oh Father God, and that can uplift us for the day as Christians, O oh Father. We pray, believe in committing everybody, Father God, that's on the airwaves in thy divine names, O oh Father. We pray, Savior divine, may you speak to us, O oh Father, in a special way. We pray, believe in committing all things in thy names. Amen. Greet you all uh, tonight in the name of our precious Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, for tonight, we'd like to take our scripture reading from the book of uh, St. John, chapter 1. Um, we'd like to start reading from verse, um, uh, from verse 35. I'll read. The Bible says, And the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God and the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? And he said unto them, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, son of Peter, his brother. And he first find his own brother Simon and said that we have found the Messiah which is being interpreted the Christ. Amen. Amen. Right, uh, from where we've read, I'd like to take a small thought that Brother Namas preached on. I'd like to title it for tonight, convinced of the message and then concerned. Amen. Amen. Now, our thought for tonight that I'd like to share is uh, it's a question that we'd like to uh, each and every one of us to ask ourselves. Mm. Are we convinced that this message is true? Yes. Simple. Are you convinced that the message brought by God's servant uh, William Branham is true or not? Yeah. Are we together? Yes, sir. Amen. Then if we become convinced, then only can we be concerned for our brothers. Only, only can we be concerned about the word being made flesh in our lives. Amen. Many a times the way we live it leaves the question, are we really convinced that the message is true? Amen. Are we really convinced that Jesus died and resurrected for you and me? Amen. Are we together? Because your action or your reaction will prove whether you are convinced or not. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yes, sir. Amen. From the scripture reading that we've read, 
uh, if you go a little bit back, uh, it's starting forth in the ministry of John. Amen. Mm. Now, John is asked to the Pharisees, Who are you? Amen. Are you that Elias? Then he says, I am not, but I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He could identify himself in the scripture. Mm. He would go back in the scriptures mm. and identify where his ministry was. Mm. Now, if you go back uh, in history, they say uh, John's parents died while she was nine years old. Mm. And from there on, he moved in the wilderness. Why? Because he had such a great calling. Mm. Are you with me? which had been pronounced by the angel Gabriel that came to his father. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then, whilst he was in the wilderness, I want to believe God had spoken of him, amen, that you are preparing the way of the Messiah. Then, where we've read, if you go a few verses back, uh, Christ comes by Jordan where he was baptized. Are we together? Mm -hmm. And he had been told by, by the angel that on whom you see the Spirit descending like a dove, that's him. Mm. Now, this was not uh, told to everybody. Then we are told that um, whilst he was there on the banks, everybody all else just saw a light. Right? Everybody else just saw a light. But then this particular voice that came and says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased uh, uh, to dwell. And the spirit descending like a dove. Only John saw that. It was not for everybody else. It was a sign specifically to John. So when John saw this thing happen, he was then convinced that this was the Messiah. Amen. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Amen. Then he says, uh, uh, Behold, someone is standing by, by the banks in uh, whose shoes I'm not worthy to lose. Now, before this incident, John did not even know who the Messiah was. Mm. Are we together? Amen. Then, after, uh, after the Holy Ghost had descended upon Christ, then John said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. He was convinced that Christ was the Lamb of God who was fulfilling what the angel told John. Amen. Then, when John was convinced, he himself, that his ministry was paving a way for the Christ. He could confidently point to him. Are you with me? Amen. He could call, confidently say, this is the fulfilling of what I've been teaching or, uh, throughout my ministry. Today, this scripture is fulfilled before your eyes. Then we are told on the scripture that we have just read that there were certain disciples of John. One of them was Andrew, who was following John. Now, these uh, disciples had been taught by John that he was just a forerunner of him that was to come. Mm -hmm. So when John said, Behold the lamp of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, let's, uh, let's read uh, verse 36. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the lamp of God. And the disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. They heard John speak. As soon as they heard John speak, they then followed Jesus because there was a change of ministry. Amen. John was to decrease and Christ was to increase. Amen. So instantly they then followed Christ. Why? Because Christ was the fulfilling of John's ministry. All that John was teaching was then fulfilled in Christ. Mm. Are you with me? Mm. So yeah, they had heard right, the teaching of John. In other words, they had been given the letter They've been given, John had preached over and over again of the coming Christ. Yes. Right? Then after, he said, behold the Lamb of God, then they followed Christ. Amen. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Just like you and me, when you heard the message, right, you decided to be a part of it. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Which was a good thing. Mm -hmm. They decided to be a part of the ministry of the day. Just like you, you left, maybe you left various denominations. Some of you were in Anglican, some of you were Pentecostals, some of you were coming from the Catholic background, and some of you maybe were coming from the apostolic sect. But when you had the message, right, mm -hmm. you decided to identify yourself with the message of the day. Yes, sir. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Let me go on a little bit. And it says, then Jesus turned and saw them following. So Christ saw them following him. And he says, and says unto him, what seek ye? 
What are you looking for? Was the question. Yes. Then he says, then they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted master, where dwellest thou? Mm. They then asked, where do you, where do you stay? Mm. Then, he said, then he said unto them, come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Mm. So here's where the thought that I want to drop in today. When they followed Christ, they didn't say stay for an hour or two. They stayed until they were thoroughly convinced that he was the Christ. So what am I saying? Here's the question. Are you really convinced of the message? Mm. After you've heard the message, you just stay long enough until you are thoroughly convinced that the message is true. Mm. Because it doesn't do you any good, right, to follow a message that does not bring the fruit in your own life. Mm. That does not transform your own life. Mm. You are better off being where you were. If the message cannot reveal the resurrected Christ back into your life, yes, it will be just exactly like just another church or just another denomination mm. or just a new philosophy that you've had. Mm. But these disciples, they stayed long enough until they had an experience that he was the Christ. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Sure, you've heard about message teaching how you ought to dress, mm. how a woman ought not to put a garment that pertains to a man. Mm. Are we together? Mm. Right. You have surely heard of the true baptism that comes from the message. But friend, that's just the beginning of the journey. Mm. Brother Branham speaks of an exodus. He says an exodus is in two parts. Mm. There is a coming out of and an entering into. Mm. The first part was coming out of Egypt, which was a good thing. But that was not the climax of the ministry. There was a Canaan to inherit. Mm. There was a land of promise that they had to inherit. Mm. So coming out of Egypt was not enough. Yes. So you coming out of the world is not enough. Yes. You should come to the climax of the message. Yes, sir. And what is the climax of the message? Amen. Mm. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Where God is able... Mm. To manifest his word in your own life. Mm. Whereby you are able. Now, in the Bible, we're taught in the book of Acts, there was first called uh, Christians. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the first called Christians, where was it? The first called Christians, why? Because they had seen that they were doing the very same thing that Christ was doing. Okay. Them, their lives were a reflection mm. of what. Uh, they had received from Christ. So your life should be a reflection of what you are receiving from the message. Mm -hmm. It does not, the Bible says, the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Amen. So knowing uh, the order or the principles of the message in itself is not enough. That in itself is just head knowledge. Yes. But then the word that you've heard mm. should mm. bring your life mm. Mm. into a transformation where mm. you live that message. Where Amen. that message of Rabbi Ram is able to manifest itself in you. Yes. Rabbi Ram, he says, uh, in the message of the Lord, mm -hmm. he says, um, he speaks about the messenger of Malachi 4, uh, Five and six, amen. Mm -hmm. If you go back to Malachi four, five and six, he says, "Behold, I say unto Elijah the prophet, mm -hmm. and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children uh, to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse." Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. Then he goes again to read Revelations ten seven. These are common scriptures. He says, "But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mysteries of God should be finished." As he had declared unto his servants the prophets. Yes. Then he brings these two scriptures together. Mm -hmm. it says the Elijah of Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6 is the very same uh, uh, angel of Revelation 10 7. Mm -hmm. And it says this messenger of Revelation 10 7 mm -hmm. is going to do two things. Mm -hmm. According to Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, he's going to turn the, the faith of the children back to the Pentecostal fathers. Hallelujah. Then, according to Revelation 10, verse 7, he's going to reveal mm. 
Mm. And mm. the mysteries mm. that have been hidden through out all the ages. Then he goes on and says, these divinely revealed mysteries are the ones that are going to literally turn the hearts of the children back to mm. the Pentecostal fathers. Amen. And then he goes on to say, when this happens, mm. again the world will hear direct from heaven. Amen. And he says, these people under their messenger will be the final voice to the final age. Yes. So in other terms, after you and me hearing the message, mm. you have heard the word. Mm. Then you become the voice for this dying age. Amen. You become the answer for this age. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. So we are not just coming into the message so that we enjoy a form of worship like we did in the Pentecostals mm. and stop there. Mm. Or enjoy how we do our song service, how we, we do our services and end there. Mm -hmm. But rather, mm. the word should become flesh it again. Yes. Remember, friends, mm. the book of Hebrews says, they without us cannot be made perfect. We, it's a race that started back then in the first church. And this race is ending in this last day, church age. Mm -hmm. And all the saints of old, they are waiting on us. Mm -hmm. So what sort of a people ought we to be? Because we are the ones that are going to finish the race. Mm -hmm. So being a people that are foreordained to finish, what, what sort of a race is this? It is the race of the word becoming flesh. Are we together? Yes. So the whole point why we believe this message is for the scripture to be fulfilled for the day that we're living in. Are we together? Amen. And you and me have got to be convinced that the message is true. And the moment you are convinced that the message is true, you become burdened for the next brother. Are you with me? You realize what your commission is in this day. Mm. Our commission is not to make the numbers in church. Our commission is not to come to church nicely dressed and end there. But our commission is to finish the race of mankind. Mm. Our commission is to fulfill the last day ministry for the day. Mm. Our, our commission is to stand as the last day bride. That God foreordained throughout all the ages. Mm. Yes. Our call in this hour is for you and me to go back to rewrite another book of Acts. Mm. What they did in the book of Acts was only a part of what Christ wants to do in his entire ministry in the bride. And you and me They've got a part to play to fulfill that part of the ministry for the last day. Are we together? Yes. That's, so these disciples, they stayed long enough. I'm, I'm just about to close. So these disciples, they stayed long enough until they were convinced that he was the Christ. He was the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Amen. They stayed long enough until they were convinced. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Some of them had certain things. They were fishermen beforehand. Mm. And they, he told them that if you follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Whilst he was walking with them, right? Mm. They only could, uh, like whilst he was walking with them, he was teaching them various teachings. And the Bible says he would teach in mysteries and in parables. Then one time he was asking, why do you teach in, 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 in these kinds of mysteries and parables? Why? Because he taught in such a manner only for the elect to catch it. Mm -hmm. And they had to wait long enough until they go to the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. Let me take an example like Peter for a whole day. Right? The same Peter, those zealous as he was. Right? Mm -hmm. Though he loved Christ so much, but when Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, when those Roman soldiers came for him, right? Mm -hmm. Peter and the rest of the disciples, they disappeared of the sea. 
He was a coward. Then he was asked uh, three times, you know him, before the cock crowed. He bluntly denied Christ for fear of his own life. But now watch the same man on the day of Pentecost when he was convinced <laughs> of the Christ. He comes and stands and says, Ye men of, and brethren, indeed that dwell in Judea. This same Christ that you have crucified is now both Lord and Christ. He stood in the midst of all the Romans, the same people that he had run, run away from a couple of days before. He was now standing boldly to preach the same Christ. Why? He went all the way to Pentecost where he was convinced that this was the Christ. Amen. But if you were to take a man such as Judas, he was walking amongst the twelve. Amen. But he was not convinced that Christ was the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. No wonder he ended up selling him for 30 pieces of silver because he was not convinced that he was the one fulfilling scripture. It sounded good, but he was not convinced. No wonder he fell short of Pentecost. So, when we are called, it's an individual work. Just like the Bible asked, if I may read it, let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Quickly, Matthew chapter 16. Listen to this, Matthew chapter 16. I want to read this verse from verse 13. And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some say Elias, some Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So he asked the Christian, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Then they told them versions of what people were saying Christ is. Then comes, he said unto them, But whom? Say ye that I am. Then he changed the question to direct it to them personally. He's no longer concerned about what everybody else is saying. He's not concerned about what these men that were spending each and every day with him thought he was. Then he goes say, And Simon Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Say, and I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build the church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. Then, he turns back to his church, and says, whom do you say that I, the son of man, am? Then Peter replied, as an individual, says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Then it says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but my Father that is in heaven. He says, Upon this rock, I, personal pronoun, will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What of that rock? Then Brother Brown teaches that that is the rock of revelation. Amen. Are we together? Mm -hmm. The rock of revelation. He did not build it upon, like what the Catholics say, that they built it upon Peter. Because he could not build it upon a man yes. that a couple of days later backslid. Yes. But it says, upon the rock of revelation, yes. where it was revealed personally to Peter who Christ was. Amen. So the question comes back to you. Who do you say? Amen. Christ is in this hour. It's a question that is asked to you. It's not asked to the pastor. It's not asked to the preacher. But you have to respond personally. And your life should prove if you caught the revelation of who he is in this hour. Are you with me? Amen. I'll give you a few examples and come to a close. Right? At one time, we are told that um, the Israelites, amen, hey. uh, they were uh, uh, the, the cold war between them and the Philistines. Right? And then we are told that the whole camp of Israel, when Goliath came to boss before them, they went into hiding. Though they were the royal seed of Abraham, they were not convinced that there was a promise upon their lives. No wonder they went into hiding. Many of the times, the reason why we are defeated in our own Christian life, we are not convinced about what the word is saying about. They were all into hiding. They were the royal seed of Abraham, but they were not personally convinced that they were what the word was saying. So they were in hiding. 
But there came one man by the name of uh, David. A man that had a personal experience, that had been convinced of his calling. And the Bible says, Brother says, Goliath made a boss and it fell on the wrong ears. Amen. It fell on the ears of a man mm -hmm. who was convinced of who he was. Mm -hmm. When he made that boss, he says, How can this uncircumcised Philistines mock the armies of the living God? Mm -hmm. This is against the promise. But because he was convinced that he was the seed of Abraham, he did not look at his stature. Neither did you look at his own abilities, but he looked at the promise. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. Are you with me? Amen. Then you looked at the what? Sorry. Then you looked at the what? He looked at the promise. Are you with me? Amen. And when he looked at the promise, he was able to bring down Goliath. Amen. Right? Mm. We can speak of one shamda. One time we're told that the Philistines came to ravish his field, right? The Philistines came to take everything that uh, he had planted for his family, the, the, the crop that he had prepared for his family. The Philistines came for that. Are we together? And we're told that Shamga was not even a warrior. But the fact that he, was, he wasn't even a warrior, but he just saw the situation that, no, but in me, I am a seed of Abraham. And the promise says, the seed of Abraham who possessed the gate of the enemy. Yes. When he became convinced that he was the seed of the Abraham, he, or the seed of Abraham, yes. they said he took an old ox god. Yes. And he slew 800 Philistines. Why? Because he was convinced of what the word was saying about him. Amen. In this hour, as I come to a close, you can only be convinced of what the message is saying about us. The message comes and tells me, right, that this last day bride is a super race, <laughs> a special class of a people. Are we together? Mm. Are we convinced that we are such a people? Yes. Are we together? Amen. The word still comes and says that uh, when this bride places the word upon the, its lips, it's the same as the is speaking. Are we convinced that we are that last day bride that should speak and things will go? If we are convinced that this message is true, then we we'll believe it with everything that is in us until the word is manifested. The disciples stayed long enough until they were sure that was the message. What we need in this hour is for us to stay long enough. Don't just stay for a period for you just maybe to read your life of lying, cheating, and a few bad habits, then that's it. Stay long enough until you are thoroughly convinced in your heart. Until you are convinced that Christ indwells in your heart. Until you are convinced that I have been transformed. Until you are convinced that the Holy Ghost is filling my heart. Don't just stay long enough in order for you to become a good church member. No, 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 no. no. But stay long enough until you stand as a son and daughter of the living God. Amen. Until you are thoroughly convinced that this message is true. If we are thoroughly convinced that this message is true, you won't hear somebody pay slide on the next day. You see? Mm -hmm. But if you are thoroughly convinced that these are the words of eternal life, if you are thoroughly convinced that the rapture lays in them tales and books, you will not leave it. You will stay here until the very end. But if you are not convinced, you only have a so far religion. After a while, you get tired. Your experience will not sustain you up until the end because you are not convinced that it is true. Mm. Are we together? Yes, sir. Let's be convinced that the message is true. Amen. Let's be convinced that this is the truth. Let's be convinced that this is the, the, the word of God mm -hmm. speaking directly to us. Yes, sir. Let's be convinced that this has got the power mm. to change and transform our lives. Yes, sir. If we are convinced, mm. then we become concerned. God, we should bless you. Let us pray. Dear Blessed Baby Father, we thank you for tonight's message. We thank you for your brother. We thank you for your sister that was listening tonight. Father God, we pray, Father God, may we be convinced of this message. May we be convinced, oh God, oh Father, that is the words of eternal life in this day and in this time. 
Father God, forgive our shortcomings. Father God, may you be with us, oh Father. May you continually, Father God, uh, review your word and your plan for the day in our lives, oh Father. We pray believing, oh God, committing everything in thine hands. We glorify you, Father God. Be with each and every family. Be with each and every one of us, oh God. We pray for a special blessing. We pray may you give your children victory over the things and the influences of the enemy. Father God, as we come to the end of the service, Father, may you bless these few words that you have spoken tonight. And Father God, may you they bring forth a change in our lives and a change in our walk. We pray, believe, and come to you in thy hands. Amen and amen. Amen. God, we bless you. We've come to the end of our service. Uh, till we meet again, let's just continue in prayer up until.